So Gareth, uh, that comes on to, well, I was going to say I talked about subjects over the last 10 days, but it's been over the last three or four years. This whole, whole Brook Khan saga. Speaking to Eddie Hearn, he seems to think that the fight is closer now than it's ever been. I don't know what that Well, 70, means. 30 or 60, 40, he said in the mail, didn't he, in his column this week. So I think they turned a corner off the events of the, be- or the beginning of the week, was it, or late last week, that, that peculiar 19-tweet rant by, by Amir, which yeah. ended up with start a picture of, the week, of his bum. I think. Yeah. It was the start of the week, yeah. oh, I've lost track of the week, yeah. Um, you know, it's a peculiar rant. I mean, I think, I think Amir, I think what happens with Amir is, you know, he, 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 it's almost like um, he's been unrequited by Mayweather and, and now Pacquiao, and, 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 and it's, it's, an, it's an emotion coming out in him. Um, he figured himself to be there, one of the big names fighting those guys, and it didn't happen, and they didn't see him in the same way. I do think, I do think there might be a shred of truth in the fact that Pacquiao w- might have found him a difficult opponent at this stage in his career, in the way he is now, and I think. You know, we all know that Pacquiao's beaten Bradley twice, really, and he's going to beat him a third time. I, I know for the for the commenters out there, obviously he didn't beat him no. the, the first, first time. I was at the fight, but he, I'm telling you, he beat him. Everyone else I was there with that night scored it for, for Pacquiao. I did by about three rounds. So he's fighting a guy, in my view, he's beaten twice. So it's a swan song fight. It's a, it's a hurrah. It's a last hurrah. It's not a, a big, serious, tough fight. So Khan's carping from that. He's absolutely blowing over it so I think Khan has a view that Brooke isn't the the, the star that he is but I, I think Khan, Amir's problem is that he's sat in the shadows for quite a while now and Cal, Cal has a great reputation in this country he may not have the biggest fan, fan following in the world but he's very respected in the industry and I think there's a growing following and obviously he's being built again and again and again in these events on Sky it does not make any sense to me whatsoever that Amir Khan doesn't take the Kelbrook fight. Even if he loses, and it's a brilliant fight, they'll probably fight again. His stock will still have been re-established with the British market. I mean, I wrote last year, I, I, I had to write a piece of the Telegraph on the close of the year and the beginning of this year, who really needs to shine this year? And it's Amir Khan. One fight last year, Chris Algieri, convincing points win, but an unconvincing performance. Um, the only fight he had last year. He did brilliant good works with the Syrian refugees and, and up in Carlisle and all those brilliant things he does around his foundation. But for me, he stagnated last year. And I would love nothing more, like all of us would, to see Amir Khan walk out of the tunnel this summer in June before Ramadan, because October will be too late. 4th of June, down that tunnel to face Kelbrook. It will be as big as Frotch and Groves. The two men don't like each other. They're not big sellers in, in that kind of um, sledging war you get with some great kind of uh, protagonist, but there is genuine needle and dislike between those two men, and that will ignite when they come together for a series of press conferences. Coogan, uh, all I can say to you is it doesn't make any sense to me that Amir Khan won't take that fight. I, I, it's great to hear Eddie Hearn's comments that it's starting to roll again and they are turning the corner because it's a great British fight. We are the envy of America right now. We could have, if David Hayes just come back, we could have, let's say you've got to put Deontay Wilder in the mix. We could have three of the top five heavyweights in the world in a year's time. You know, in Tyson Fury, David Hay, and, uh, and uh, Anthony Joshua. Um, we ha- could have a fight that attracts 80,000 people with Amir Khan and Kel Brook this summer. Do you know, in America, when I speak to people like Mo- Mike Rosenthal, the Ring Magazine editor, or the TV guys over there when we're in the mix zone, when we're in the, in the media zone with those guys, they are flabbergasted by the, the size of the events that are going on over here. The fact there are 12 world champions right now over here, that we have the number one in the heavyweight division. And boxing's flying high. I hope for Amir, for Kel, for the fans, you know, for all of us in this industry, that we get that fight this year because 
we, we need to keep the momentum going because I'm old enough to remember it going like this. It goes up and it goes down. And when, when we don't have lots of champions, when there aren't great fights out there, people lose interest because boxing's like that. It's peaks and troughs. And right now, we are riding and surfing a big wave. And I hope Amir Khan gets on board on a very, very large surfboard pointed at Wembley. I certainly hope so too. Right, I know you're a busy man and... Uh... I'm sure we'll catch up uh, tomorrow night at the Copper Box. You're coming, obviously? I am indeed. All right, well, listen, um, safe travels back to where you live and then safe journey back here tomorrow. Well, up the road, Copper Box. Cool. Gareth, thanks for talking to Eiffel TV and uh, we'll catch up with you soon. It's thanks always you. a pleasure, my thanks friend. Thanks for your thoughts tonight. Thank you. Boom!